Hi, Professor Bob Young back at you here. This is College Trigonometry Video 2, and we're going to discuss the unit circle in this video, one of the most important concepts in all of trigonometry. Many trig professors will call this the circle of life. All right, so to use, in this, in this video, we're going to use these objectives. We're going to use a unit circle to define trig functions of real numbers, recognize the domain and range of sine and cosine functions, find exact values of some trig functions, use even and odd trig functions, recognize and use fundamental identities, use periodic properties, and we're going to evaluate trig functions using our calculator. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at the unit circle. Remembering from our last video, we talked about the four quadrant angles here. So we're going to go ahead and pick that up and just refresh your memory here. So notice I've got degrees with a little degree bubble here. And in, if it's a square, we're going to talk radians just so we can remember some of these common ones here. So we said that this was zero degrees zero radians, and if this was the origin, then this ordered pair would be one zero. Up here, we know we've got a 90 degree or right angle, which we said matched up with pi over two radians. And remember, we can convert to degrees and radians and vice versa based on that first video, and that would be the point zero one. Over here, we've got pi, or 180 degrees, which was really the thing we used to convert from degrees to radians and back. And this would be the ordered pair negative one zero. And down here on the bottom, we've got 270 degrees, which is three pi over two radians. Sneak that in there. And then this ordered pair down here would be zero negative one. All right, now what we did is we broke the triangle into four and sixes, right triangles into four and sixes in our last video. So remembering the Pythagorean theorem for right triangles, which says a square plus b square equals c square, um, way back when they found on these 45, 45, 90 right triangles that if these angles are the same here, if we split this 90 degrees in half and this is 45, then the hypotenuse is always going to be the square root of two times that. So in this case, since this is a unit circle, if this hypotenuse is equal to one, then these two sides, we would have to divide by the square root of two to get the X and the Y coordinate here. So we would get one over the square root of two, which if we rationalize the denominator, X and Y would be the square root of two over two and the square root of two over two. So if we said this squared plus this squared, it would equal one, and that's what you want to have happen on the unit circle. So remember, we said this was 45 degrees and pi over four, and we were counting by fours then, so we went zero, one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, 5 pi over 4. So we're just counting by pi over 4s here. 6 pi over 4. You always use the quadrant angles. 7 pi over 4 and 8 pi over 4 gets you back to 2 pi. So we could put 0 or 2 pi here once we get around or 0 or 360 degrees if we go all the way around. All right, then in degrees we were adding 45s instead of pi over 4. So 45, 90, Another 45 is 135, 180, 225, 270, 315. So we're just adding 45 degrees now, okay? And look how quickly we're filling in the circle. Now the beauty of circles is these are symmetric creatures. So if you've got the square root of two over two and the square root of two over two in the first quadrant, what happens to these in the second quadrant? Well, X changes sign. And there you go. All right, you get negative square root of two over two, square root of two over two in the second. What's X and Y in the third? If it's this in the first, well, remember in the third quadrant, X and Y are both negative, so we can put that. And in the fourth, what happens? Well, X stays positive and then Y goes negative. So there, ladies and gentlemen, 
is our 45, 45, 90 right triangles giving us those nice unit circle values. So now we're looking at these X and Y values in this video. Now here's another little proof also when t equals pi over 4 here. At pi over 4, if you thought about x squared plus y squared equals to 1 in our last picture, and then you said a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is still 1, knowing that a and b are the same on 45, 45, 90 right triangles here, here's a little algebraic proof of what we just talked about, then a squared plus a squared is 2a squared would be 1. Dividing both sides by 2, a squared would be 1 half. And then a taking the square root of both sides would be the square root of 1 half or the square root of 2 over 2, rationalizing the denominator. All right, now the next thing we want to look at is our 30, 60, 90 right triangles here. And remember, not only can we divide the unit circle into fours around the circle here, we can also subdivide it into sixes. And the reason for that is, if this is a 30 degree angle, let's say right here, if this is a 30, 60, 90 classic right triangle, then what they found on these 30, 60, 90s is the side opposite the 30 degree or smaller angle, if that's X, the hypotenuse is always twice as long as that. And the side opposite the 60 degree angle is always the square root of three times whatever that smaller side is. So there's a definite relationship between 30, 60, 90 right triangles. Now again, we're talking unit circles here. So if this hypotenuse is one, which we know the radius of all unit circles is one, then the Y value over here is gonna be half of that, which would be one half. And the X value along the bottom would be the square root of three over two times that would be the square root of three times a half would be the square root of three over two. So there, when we're at 30 degrees or pi over six radians, if we wanna count by sixes here, um, that is going to be your X and Y values. So these X and Y values are going to become extremely important. And we also want to go ahead and put our quadrant angles in here because we always use those and we get those points down. You really want to start solidifying your understanding of these key angles in trigonometry, the circle of life. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill in pi over 2 pi, and then we're counting by 90 degrees, each one of the degrees here. So we'll get down here, this will be 3 pi over 2, 180, or I'm sorry, 270. I forgot to add the 90 on that one. Let me scratch all that out there, 270. And then we can go back to 360 here, remember, if we go all the way around, or go back to 2 pi radians. All right, now what I did is I snuck another line down here. So what happens is around the circle, this 30, 60, 90 that has X value square root of three over two Y one half, when you, this is the 60 degree angle right here, the 30, 60, 90 kind of rotates around. And what happens with the X and Y is that now this is one half becomes one half, and this becomes the square root of three over two. So again, getting this first quadrant is important. And now let's go ahead and fill in all the radians here and show you how easy it is. Now we've got the quadrant angles filled in. A lot of students have trouble with radians, especially in calculus. So 30 degrees, one pi over six, y'all ready? Here we go, one pi over six. Two pi over six is pi over three radians. Three pi over six. 4 pi over 6 is 2 pi over 3 radians. 5 pi over 6, so I'm just counting, I'm adding pi over 6 to all the radians here in the boxes. 6 pi over 6 is pi. 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6 reduces to 4 pi over 3. 9 pi over 6 is the 3 pi over 2. 10 pi over 6 reduces to 5 pi over 3. And 11 pi over 6 completes the radians. Of course, you go back to 12 pi over 6 and you're at 2 pi. So I like to count in radians by 6s or by 4s if it's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. 
and we've almost got everything filled in. Now, degree students tend to do even better. We'll add 30 to all the degrees all the way around you already. Here we go, 30 and 30, 60, 30 is 90, and 30 is 120, 150. Just keep adding 30, 180. Notice the quadrant angles always count. 210, 240, 30, 30, 30, 30, 270, 300, 330, all the way around. Now again, symmetrical creature circles. So look at these points now, the x, y values. And these are going to be very important as we continue. If this is the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, 30 degrees, it's going to match up with this 30 degree over here. What's going to happen with x and y's and both of these quadrants up here, even the 60? Right, the x is going to change. So just go ahead and change the signs on the x's and you've got this thing here. And this one's going to match up over here. Minus square root of 3 over 2. 1 half. What happens in the third quadrant? Here, both signs change. So the 30 degree closest to 30 here, both of these will change. As will the others. And we will have this thing beat. And down here in the fourth quadrant, and notice again, symmetry here. So you want to make sure the distance from the XY here and the XY here is the same. The only thing, again, that's going to change is the sign. And in this case, the Y is going to change sign here. So you'll get the square root of 3 over 2, negative a half, and then a half, negative square root of 3 over 2. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the 30, 60, 90, or sixes and radians as we continue. All right, now, definition of a unit circle is a circle of radius one. We've talked about it here with the center at the origin of a rectangular coordinate system, x and y's. The equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So all of these x, y values we have gotten, those square roots of two over two, square root of two over twos, the square roots of three over twos, one half. If you add those x and y values and square them, you're going to get one here on this unit circle. And here is another thing we need to continue on. It says, in a unit circle, the radian measure of the central angle, now remember that has been S in our prior episodes, is equal to the length of the intercepted arc. Both are given by the same real number, T. And this is going to bring us to our six trigonometric functions now. So here comes the uh, six functions, and they have the name of each one, the abbreviation. So we're going to talk about next the sine, cosine, tangent, which is abbreviated over here. And the reciprocals of sine is cosecant. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. And the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. So what we're going to look at here now is the definitions of the trigonometric functions in terms of the unit circle. So let's take a look at this diagram here. This is very important. If t is a real number, okay, and p equals xy is a point on the unit circle that corresponds to the number or corresponds to t, okay, so you've got a t here for the central angle, and it's matching up here with this um, T out here, which is on the circular part of the circle, the arc length here. Here's the definitions. The sine of T is Y. The cosine of T is the X value. The tangent of T is Y over X. And then you can take the reciprocals, cosecant, abbreviated, secant, and cotangent, and just take the reciprocals of this. So let's go ahead and do this one in this picture. And notice it looks like that uh, we have a 30 degree uh, spot here because the square root of 3 over 1 half would be the 30 degree angle right here. So here's how you do it. The sine of t here then would be the y value. That would just be 1 half. The cosine of, of t would be the x value would be the square root of 3 over 2. Now a little trick here for the tangent is going to be y over x. Here's a little cool trick here. If you have 1 half over the square root of 3 over 2, multiplying by the reciprocals, if you have the same number there, those will kind of cancel out. 
and you'll get one over the square root of three, which we can rationalize in a second, okay? Now, I'm not gonna rationalize that yet, and I'll show you why. Now, the cosecant of t would be the reciprocal of one half, so that's gonna equal two over here. And then notice it says y can't be zero. Now, if y is zero, we've got an undefined fraction there. We've got problems, okay? The secant of t is one over x here, so we're gonna take the reciprocal of the square root of three over two and just flip it here. And again, I would say rationalize last on these. And then the cosine of t equals x over y, take that and flip it, and you'll get the square root of three. Now, if you wanna go ahead and rationalize the denominators now that you have all of the answers, you most certainly can on a few of these here. So this is what they're after when they want you to find the uh, definitions of the trigonometric functions at some number t, angle t, so forth. And we'll continue and do a few more just to make sure you have it. All right, so we'll do a few more examples here. As we indicated, uh, it says use the figure to find the values of the trigonometric functions at t at the point p corresponding to t. So I threw a few more examples in here. Uh, I gave you the point 0, negative 1 for t here. So the sign again would be the y value. In this case, uh, y would be negative 1. x would be 0. Now y over x, negative 1 over 0 is undefined. So that's not going to happen. So I'll put the undefined empty set symbol there. And if you want to, you can make a note here, negative 1 over 0 is not going to happen. But see, when you go to do the reciprocal of negative 1 over 0, that's going to be 0. 0 over 1 or negative uh, fraction 0 over 1 will be 0. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. And the reciprocal of zero here, this is zero over one, one over zero. So in this case, we're gonna have a few undefined creatures as well here. So it's not gonna work. All right, another point I gave you, negative square root of two over two, negative square root of two over two. Do you remember what angle this would be over here, ladies and gentlemen? Trying to get these angles and radians and degrees correctly in your mind here. So this was 45. If you had a half a circle, another 180, you'd be at what down here? 225. The y value, the sine of that y is gonna be minus square root of two over two, as would x. The cosine minus square root of two over two. Anything divided by itself is one. All right, so again, don't uh, go ahead now and you can take the reciprocals of these. So this would be minus two over the square root of two, which would be both of these, cosecant and secant t, which is the reciprocal of sine over cosine. Now, if you rationalize that, you're gonna get minus two times the square root of two over two, and the twos would cancel out here, so you would have minus square root of two for both of these. And of course, the, the reciprocal of one is still one here on that one. So just a few more examples as we continue. All right, now we're gonna look at the domain and range of sine and cosine functions, which is really, again, I always try to equate that word sine with y values and cosine with x values, if you think about it. So let's think about this here. It says the domain of the sine and cosine function is negative infinity to infinity, the set of all real numbers. So let's say we're starting here on our circle and we go around and around and around and around and around. We could keep adding two pi, adding two pi, adding 360, adding 360 to infinity and back. And also we can go this way to infinity and back. But notice here it says the range of these functions is negative one to one um, inclusive. So the y values, and forgive my dog here, he's found something he's gonna bark at. Again, you know how much you get on these videos. All right, and then on the X's here, you can see we've got one zero and then negative one zero. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread this out. We're gonna unravel this circle in later chapters here, and we're gonna put it along X and Y. So we'll start at the origin. We can go, um, 2 pi, we can go 4 pi, we can go 6 pi. This is what I was talking about if you want to look at it on the rectangular system here. 
So on X, we can continue to go um, to infinity to negative infinity, but no matter where we go on Y, the range will always be between negative one and one. And we'll be looking at these graphs later on as well, but we want to put the domain and range of sine and cosine in your mind early on here. All right, the next thing we want to discuss is what's called the even and odd trigonometric functions. And the cosine and the secant functions are even. Now, if you remember what that means from pre-calculus and college algebra and so forth, even functions have y-axis symmetry and odd functions have origin symmetry. All right, so also, if you look at their angles here, the cosine of a negative angle is equal to the cosine of its positive angle on both cosine and its reciprocal, of course, secant. And on sine and tangent, if you negate those angles, you have to put a negative uh, in front of the sine of that angle. And I think what we should do is look at the picture here real quick, and we'll pick one. Um, we'll pick a few of these and look at them here. So on the cosine here, I think I'm going to pick the pi over 4 angle. And remember at pi over 4, our x and y values are going to be square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. And at negative pi over 4, if we were to go this direction, what would change, ladies and gentlemen? The x or the y in the fourth quadrant? Right, the y. All right, so if we look at this, let's think, see if this makes sense here. So if I take the cosine and I put pi over 4 in here for both t's, because that's what we're looking at. So these are some even and odd functions. This is how they behave here. What is the cosine of negative pi over 4 down here, that's the x value, square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of positive, ah, it's the same, yes, and that will work because what's happening here is that if you go from the first quadrant to the fourth quadrant here, like if you go positive angle this direction, negative angle this direction, x is going to be the same. Whereas y, if we put in the, the negative pi over 4 there, the sine of, if we put pi over 4 in both of these, we're going to get negative pi over 4 equals minus sine of pi over 4. So again, I'm just plugging pi over 4 in here to show you something. Now, what is the sine of negative pi over 4? Now, notice the y value down here. That's y is negative square root of 2 over 2. So if we just say the sine of pi over 4, that's positive square root of 2 over 2. If we don't put a negative sign here, they will not be the same. So what happens here is if we change quadrants, what happens to the y signs here up and down, they change. So that's why if you say the sine of some negative angle, it has to be the opposite to get that sign, to get those two items to be the same. And this works the same for tangent and cosecant. All right, so now we want to go ahead and continue our trig identities here. The fundamental identities, and we've talked about these in a manner of speaking, reciprocal identities, the sine of t is um, equal to 1 over the cosecant of t. So these are reciprocals. The cosine of t equals 1 over the secant of t. And the tangent of t, remember its reciprocal was cotan, is 1 over the cotangent of t, and vice versa. So if you say the cosecant of t, that's 1 over sine. Now again, we were thinking that this sine of t was y, and this was 1 over y. This was x. This was 1 over x. So we want to keep these in mind, that these are reciprocals. Cotangent t equals 1 over tangent t. Now the tangent we were saying is y over x. So again, associate y with sine, cosine with x in the earlier um, part of the video. Cotangent's the reciprocal of those. So we'll look at an example here with some numbers thrown in. It says, given the sine of t is 2 thirds and the cosine of t is the square root of 5 over 3, find the value of each of the four remaining trigonometric functions. So they want us to go ahead and find the others here. So the tangent would be the sine over the cosine. So they plug those numbers in for sine and cosine. 
And they didn't use my little trick. They kind of multiplied by the reciprocal there. But let me show you, you can use that little trick I showed you whenever those bottom numbers are the same here. You could do a little and get rid of those and you could have got way down here quickly. Now they of course multiplied by the reciprocal and they did the whole there and got to it. And they rationalized the denominator and got here. Uh, the cosecant of t is just the reciprocal of this two thirds. So they could have just flipped that and said three halves. And let's see if they got, we got the other ones here. I'm sure we do. Yes, the secant, they went ahead and they took the reciprocal of cosine and they just flipped that three over the square root of five and the cotangent, um, they took the reciprocal of the uh, tangent there. So they're going to give you lots of these to try to make sure you remember those uh, six trigonometric identities and so forth. Now we're going to next look at the Pythagorean identities. We've got any of the sine squared plus the cosine squared. And if you think about your unit circle, if you square y and you square x on the unit circle, you're always going to get one. And this is the really the big one right here. The sine squared plus the cosine squared t equals one. And then over here, these other two stem from that. So one plus the tangent square of t equals the secant square of t. And one plus the cotangent square of t equals the cosecant square of t. All right, so I kind of remember cotan and cosecant, and these will become very important when we start verifying identities and doing a lot of things with identities later in the course. But let me just show you that you can prove this from the first one. I'll prove one of these two real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and I think I'll prove the second one. I can prove either one of them real quick just to show you how it works here. 1 plus tangent square t equals secant square t. I'm going to go ahead and change the tangent square t. Remember, tangent is sine over cosine. I'm going to go ahead and say, well, the tangent square then would be sine square t over cosine square t. I want to get a common denominator between these two fractions. And oh my gracious young, what are you doing now? <laughs> Yes, you can add fractions even in trig. Multiplying both top and bottom by cosine square t here. One, of course, would be cosine square t over cosine square t plus sine square t over cosine square t. So when you add the numerators together, we've got a common denominator. Look at what we get here. We get cosine square t plus sine square t over cosine square t. Now, what is this again? I told you we could use this one to verify the other two. This would give us one over cosine square t. Now, what is the reciprocal of cosine? Oop, there it is, secant square t. And you could do a similar argument on the other one. So the Pythagorean identities, we're starting to get familiar with the unit circle now. Now we've got to become familiar with some identities and so forth as we progress. Right, an example using the Pythagorean identity, it says, let's, get, let's take and say that the sine of t is one half and t, the angle has to be between zero and pi over two, which would put that in the first quadrant. It says, find the value of the cosine of t using a trigonometric identity here. Now, if you knew the sine of t was one half and you knew your unit circle, that would be equivalent to 30 degrees. And you could say, well, the cosine is a square root of three over two without doing any of this, if you understood the unit circle. All right. But what they did is they took this identity, this fundamental one we looked at, the most important one, sine square plus cosine square is one. They took the one half and plugged it in for sine there, squared it, got a fourth got it equal to zero, subtracted one fourth from both sides here, and that gives you three fourths is equal to cosine square, and then took the square root of both sides there, and then the cosine of t is the square root of three over two. So they just did it that way. All right, now the next thing we wanna look at is the definition of a periodic function, and this is saying a function f is periodic if there exists a positive number p such that f of t plus p equals f of t for all t in the domain of f. The smallest positive number p for which f is periodic is called the period of f. So if we were to think of some 
angles here, I think you would see that this makes perfect sense on the things we've been discussing so far, this periodic nature of trig functions. What if I took uh, and I said, F, and I'm going to pick an angle that we've been looking at here. I'll take pi over 6 here, all right? And if I add a P number, you know what P number I'm going to pick? I'm going to pick 2 pi, all right? Now, that would equal F of pi over 6, see? Because this is the nature of the circle. If you were to take pi over 6, which if we drew a quick circle here, I'll just draw a really quick one here. It'd be right in here, I think y'all see. And we could keep adding 2 pi, adding 2 pi. It may come back to like co-terminal angles and so forth, have the same terminal side and so forth. But what's going to happen is you could subtract 2 pi, subtract 360. Does it matter if we put 360 degrees in there if this were 30 degrees? Same deal here. And this would be the same thing as 30 degrees as we go around. We land in the same place. So that's what they're talking about, that periodic nature of um, the trig identities and so forth. Now on the tangent here, if you add pi here, if you got the tangent of t plus pi, that's going to give you the tangent of t. And the cotangent of t plus pi will give you the cotangent of t. Now notice it says the tangent and cotangent functions are periodic functions that have a period of pi. All right, so sine, cosine have a period of 2 pi, tangent, cotangent, pi here. And they just looked at some examples to illustrate this. So notice the cotangent of 5 pi over 4. If you broke up 5 pi over 4, you could write that as pi over 4 plus pi which is really the same thing as the cotangent of pi over 4, 1. And, if, and we're going to look at some calculator exercises in a minute, so we'll show you how to do this on your calculator. And then the cosine of negative 9 pi over 4, it looks like they used that even and odd identity and just said, well, that's negative on cosine. That's the same thing as the positive angle there across x. And then they took and used this periodic property and said, well, that would be pi over 4 plus 2 pi which would give you the same thing as the cosine of pi over 4, and you'd get the square root of 2 over 2. All right, so they kind of give you a review here, the repetitive behavior of sine, cosine, and tangent functions. So it says for any integer n um, and real number t, the sine of t plus 2 pi n, I mean, you could say that for a million years is going to be the sine of t. Same with cosine, tangent is in periods of pi, so you don't need the 2 there. It's just pi n there. All right, now to evaluate trigonometric functions using our calculator, we're going to use the keys on the calculator, mark sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, be sure to set the mode to degrees or radians depending on the function you are evaluating, and you may consult your manual on your calculator for specific directions. Every calculator works a little bit differently here. So what I want you to try right now on your calculator is go to radian um, mode and put in the sign. And then what I tend to tell students to do, and a lot of calculators do this when you go to enter things, and you hit sign, your calculator sometimes will just put a parentheses after it. Then go ahead and type in pi divided by four and then close the parentheses. And if you round it four decimal places, you should get 0.7071. So notice the difference between radian and degree mode. It's kind of easy to tell if you look at it. I mean, this one's got the degree symbols here. And remember, radians are just numbers. They're just six, a little bit over six radians all the way around the circle. So you're just putting in numbers there. And in radian mode, now, young, I don't see a cosecant key on my calculator. Oh, my gracious, how do I put that in? Well, this is why you have to know those identities we talked about earlier. What's the reciprocal of cosecant? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is the sine. So you would have to type in 1 over the sine of 1.5 here, and it would give you approximately this number, 1.0025. All right, next go to degrees. Put in, um, in degree mode, cosine. And again, remember, they're gonna, they'll are gonna they put parentheses around these numbers here. You'll put cosine. Just type in 107 if you're in degree mode. They won't have the degree thingy there. You'll get approximately negative point. 2924. And remember, you have to round this to the near, that's the number you have to watch out for there. So if it's five or greater, round up. 
If it's less than five, leave it alone. Oh, young, and my calculator doesn't have a cotangent key. What do I do? You have to know your rules, ladies and gentlemen. The cotangent, reciprocal, tangent. Here's what you got to put in in degree mode. One divided by the tangent of that will give you 1.2349. So this concludes video number two, college trigonometry.